So a riddle seems like a good place to start. Seeing as I plan on confusing you for the entire talk, I might as well start with a riddle. Now, the Sphinx's riddle, in case you don't have a classical education, was uh, what walks on four legs in the morning, on two legs in the afternoon, and on three legs in the evening? And I'll get to the answer. If you don't know that one, it's so old and classic. It's been used a thousand times. But I got a new one for you. What's full of bugs in the morning, sand and salt at noon, and empty in the evening? Being a forum warrior, if I don't put a definition up, I lose my uh, membership card in the forum, so I had to put up what longevity is. Longevity has a couple of meanings, but mainly I'm going to be flashing between them. I'm not consistent. I'm redundant and repetitive, but not consistent. So knowing what longevity is when you're talking about a uh, living thing is its, its lifespan. On the other hand, when you're talking about something like a game, it's also lifespan, but it's not an alive thing. It's just how long does it last? So living things have quite a lifespan, and it really spans through, uh, depending on what species you are. It has numbers there. There's people there somewhere. Where are they? 80. 80. Yeah, that's... The thing is, it's not a set lifespan. You know what I mean? That it's, you don't come with, you are going to live exactly 80 years. That would make for really interesting gaming. Hey, Bob, I'd love to come to the structure bash next week, but I'm going to be dead. You know, we don't know when our expiry date is. I'm pretty sure I have a best before date, and I'm past that, but not an expiry date. So uh, some species, it's not locked down to a set number. That is an ocean quahog. It was found off the coast of the island we happen to be on right now. They now, normally, they can last up to 400 years. The one they found was 507 years old. They found that out by killing it and then counting the rings. So if they hadn't discovered it, it might have made 508 years old. But they found it and want to know how old it is. And the easiest way to find out how old some things, it's like trees or me. Uh, my students used to ask, how old are you, Ms. Mr. Daw? And I'd say, well, that's easy. You're going to have to cut me in half and count the rings. They didn't get that one. <laughs> so you've got this thing that has lasted forever on the floor of the ocean. Uh, just sitting there, hard shell, set in its ways, probably complains about crabs, null sec. <laughs> then you got a mayfly, 24-hour lifespan. It's kind of like wake up, grow up, have wings, fly around, maybe get swatted, maybe make it your full 24 hours. This is a rookie. Because we have people who start playing this game and die or quit or are disappointed and find it wasn't what they expected because they want to know, how do I win and will it take longer this, than this afternoon? And they don't get the fact that this is a really long game. We're this guy, not this guy. So the life expectancy of the game seems to have two different uh, versions. We have the people who are in it for the long term, and then we have the mayflies who come flapping in, and uh, CCP does the stats. I found yesterday in the opening um, ceremony, the scariest stat that they gave, I don't know, you guys saw the opening ceremony, was that 57% uh, percent stat. Do you remember that one? 57% of the EVE players right now weren't playing four years ago. I mean, I feel like I'm only middle-aged in the game, and I'm 13 years in. But all of a sudden, I'm finding out I'm Methuselah. <laughs> you know, wow, mister, you've been playing longer than this week? Oh, God, child, go away. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> they make me feel old, but then I are old. <laughs> so we want to try to bridge these guys to these guys. And in a game, when you're playing a computer game, these guys, uh, the modern generations, raised with that. Fortnite, you start playing and you're done 15 minutes later or whenever that damn zone gets to zero where everybody else dies. They're used to games that are on a very, very short time scale. And it's hard for an EVE player to explain to them what the long time scale is, what we're playing. It's like we're playing two different lifespans. So when we talk about longevity, sometimes we're just trying to turn these people into the quahog. You know, we're trying to get them to realize that you have a much longer play in this game, and it's not win all the things today. You won't. But Mike, you might say, if you knew who I was, Almost everybody introduces themselves at the middle. I usually like to get started and then do the introduction. So I should tell you who I am. I'm Mike Azariah. I drive Operation Magic School Bus. I'll explain that in a second. And I've served five terms on the CSM. Oh, don't get too close to the mic. The joke I did last time, I was in CSM 8, 9, and 10, later acknowledged as some of the worst CSMs ever but now I've served in 14 and 15 where we had no summits whatsoever, so these were the lesser ones of those. I have seen how the sausages are made. I have survived, and it's funny, if you take a look at the history of the CSM, a lot of people serve and then leave the game, never to return. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, longevity-wise, this is where you're picking out the tombstone. I got to be on the CSM, <laughs> gone. <laughs> so uh, I, there are a few of us who are really, really stubborn. Steve Ronakin, I don't know if he's here, but if he is, he's even more fireproof than I am. You know, me, we're the sphinxes. We stand around, say things that nobody understands, and hope that that works. Magic School Bus, one of the ways I keep playing is I don't play Eve the way a lot of you do. I wish I could. And occasionally I do go out, I was just talking about running abyssal space and, uh, you know, occasionally I do like to fly with people like Bombers Bar when I can. But mainly I'm known for being a Care Bear. And I'm okay with that. Operation Magic School Bus, I set up seven years ago. What I do is I fly to the career systems, all of them, and hand out free fitted ships to the new bros less than 30 days old. And when I say fitted ships, I don't mean teaching them how to hit the get your Corvette button. If they're between zero and seven days, I give them a fitted frigate appropriate to the region. So if we're in Amar space, I give them Punisher. If we're in Caldari, it's a Kestrel. You follow. If they're between seven and 20 days, I give them a fitted destroyer. Same rules uh, appropriate to the area. And between 20 and 30 days, I give a fitted cruiser. All they have to do is speak up in local when the bus is in, in the system. And I will stay there for about five minutes, post in local, post in rookie help chat, see who speaks up. And it is amazing, A, the number of people. There can be 80 people in local, not a single person speaks up. Then you'll get one person at the four minute mark. What's the scam? <laughs> ah. I see you're a person of distinction who understands what Eve is. <laughs> I would like to explain to you that I'm not a scam. The problem is, a scammer would say that. <laughs> so I ask him, tell me, what words that I could use to convince you that I'm not a scam if a scammer can say the same damn thing? They go, don't know, must be a scam. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe if you dock up and I give you a ship and you try to figure out where I'm taking something from you. No, it's probably a trap. <laughs> what kind of trap? You're going to shoot me. What's stopping me from shooting you right now? You're not docked. And I can find you. <laughs> the only safe place in this system is where I am. Don't make me come and find you. So they... Um, Eventually some doc, and I do do that, and I've had a lot of feedback. The 
best thing I get is when somebody tells me, I got a ship from you five years ago, and I still have it. Yeah. You've got one? <laughs> or, or also, I get people who bring their alts in, and they're trying to figure out what the scam is, so they'll pretend that they're newbies. I can tell half the time, because the first thing they do is they get the ship, and uh, 15 seconds later, nice fit. <laughs> A newbie would not say that, man. They'd go, wow, the guns are there, but they're not loaded. It's in the hold. <laughs> you know? You have ammo, I gave you ammo, I actually gave you faction ammo. Not a lot, but enough for them to get out. They need all the help they can get. You know, before they have their skills up, you're looking at a frigate that's doing 60 to 65 DPS. Great for a level one, but anything else. So I give them faction ammo, a couple hundred rounds. You know, it's not that big a thing. I also rig the ships. To blow up. No, I rig them so they're less apt to sell them and then think that they've won. You know, because when they go to sell it, they have to strip it, and then it says, if you strip it, you'll be destroying valuable modules. Well, I don't want to do that. I guess I'll just have to keep it. I give them the ship um, to show them, A, you should be talking to people. This is an MMO. There's lots of people in the game. Talk to them. Eve sucks as a solo game. You know, the, you can do it, and the f horrible thing is, I say that, I'm in scope. <laughs> I've been in NPC and a solo player for over seven years, because part of being, and I get recruitment from people, and I go, no, I can't join you. Because doing the bus means I have to come across as neutral. You know what I mean? I can't have a favor, I can't say, by the way, now that you've got a free ship, join my beautiful alliance. Which also makes this amazing. I'm one of the few CSMs who got elected without any backing from any of the NullSec organizations. You know. So that's who I is. I even got my, I like this shot. That actually is the bus. The bus, in case you didn't know, is a bowhead because I have to be able to move the bloody ships to the various stops. Sometimes I fly something smaller, faster. I love the Leopard. It's expensive, and I'm always worried about losing it, but man, when I just want to stop at all the systems real fast and give something out, it's nice to be doing 20 AU a second, you know, on the jump. So, um, because I'm old, and because I'm talking about lifespan, that sort of thing, I have a hospital story for you. And it will connect in, but just put up with an old man telling you about his time in the hospital, okay? Humor the old man. So, um, a couple of years ago, in the middle of COVID, I got my second diagnosis of cancer, went through uh, chemotherapy, came out the other side. Lovely having your immunosystem compromised completely during a pandemic, but that's not the hospital story. Afterwards, I start having uh, blood clots because of the chemotherapy, but that's also not where this is going. What's going is, I was really weak from the chemotherapy, so I started trying to do exercise, just doing walking, going out and mowing the lawn, that sort of thing. I found that uh, when I did that, my left arm started aching. And I thought, oh, another bloody blood clot, oh man. So I called my doctor, my doctor says, left arm? Yeah. He says, yeah, I'm gonna make some calls and I'm gonna get you to see some a specialist real fast. Real fast for him was within three days. I saw a cardiologist. Cardiologist booked me and put me on the treadmill. I started walking. I was told treadmill takes about half an hour, two minutes. You, off. Sit over there quietly. I thought it was going to take a half hour. Not for you. This was on a Monday. He said, I hope you don't have a lot of plans for this week. You're going to be busy. By Friday, I was in the hospital again to get my heart worked on. Turns out it wasn't blood clots. It was my heart was given out. Expiry date. So uh, the thing is with heart surgery is they put you in, but they don't tell you what time the surgery is going to be. So it's just check in in the morning at 8 o'clock in the morning, no food. You've done all sorts of nasty things to your body the day before to be ready for surgery. You're starving. Wait in this bed. 
with the curtains drawn around you so you can take your mask off, and we'll come and get you. Fine. And I'm texting to my wife, and the phone battery is dying faster than I am. And so, <laughs> and so all of a sudden, I'm dozing in between this, just trying to kill time. Should I use that phrase? Anyways, I'm lying there, and all of a sudden, I hear, Mike, Mike, look at me, Mike, Mike. There's nobody around me. And I hear the voice going, I think he's crashing. Get the cart. Have you called the doctor? Get him stat. Get him stat. Mike, 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 can you hear us? Yes, I know you're in pain. Mike, Mike, stay with us. And this is beginning to freak me out. Because it occurs to me that you always hear about these people dying and having this out-of-body experience where it's happening to somebody else. And they're just floating above watching this. And I'm going, am I supposed to be fighting to answer? And I'm lying there, and it takes about 60 seconds for me to realize there's another guy named Mike in the bloody <laughs> ward. <laughs> so you try to lie there listening them to them yelling your name over and over and talking about you dying. Not using the last name, just Mike. Mike is crashing, Mike is bleeding into his own heart, Mike is not doing well. Mike, Mike, stay with me, Mike, Mike. Oh, God. I'm, this is not fun. I text to my wife, and I said, it is time for me to go to my happy place. I can disassociate myself, which in retrospect, is probably not the best thing to do when you're already worried about having an out-of-body experience. I'm now going to leave my body, Mike. But I kind of went, I'm just going to shut off all the external. I'm going to start ignoring people yelling, Mike. And I'm just going to stay here. And I zone out. That's fine. A few minutes later or half an hour later or an hour later, I have no idea. Someone says, Mr. Daw, it's time to go. I'm looking for the light. <laughs> no, it's just a little guy with a wheelchair going, it's my turn for the surgery. So off I went. I never found out what happened to Mike. But my real name is Mike, by the way. But um, the concept of you're dying, but you don't know it is a really scary one. To a certain extent, we're all mortal. We are all dying. But in longevity terms, we don't have that expiry date do you ever, are you guys old enough to worry about I could be dead and just haven't figured it out yet? But Mike, when do you get to Eve? <laughs> I just did. Games, funny things. Games have lifespans. There's some that have lasted a long time. That chess set uh, comes from the 12th century. It's in a museum in England. It... Uh, Chess has lasted a long time. You could probably go back 500 years or 400 years and play a game of chess with somebody and still agree on the rules. That game has lasted. You know, there's other games. I did research. I was going to go off on a weird tangent. I managed to hold myself back from that. But think about board games that you played when you were a kid that don't even exist anymore. I mean, yes, Hungry Hungry Hippo exists, and Monopoly, for some reason, still exists. <laughs> But there are other board games that lasted you know, for a very short period of time, and they're now collector's items if you actually have all the pieces. There's also games that you can play that lasted in a weird way only as, until you solved them. Like how many of you have played tic-tac-toe recently? I mean, we know don't go, you know, where to start, where not to start, how to... And if you have two people who know how to play tic-tac-toe, this is just a way to scribble lines on a piece of paper. Nobody's going to win unless one of you is really, really drunk. <laughs> so um, what makes a game last? What gives a game its lifespan, its longevity? Now, if I actually had a definitive answer for that, I would be charging for this talk, and CCP would be paying it. You know, so would a lot of other gaming companies. 
Because if you can actually boil down what makes a game last, what gives it lifespan, that would be phenomenal in the gaming industry. But I don't have a definitive answer. I don't have the right answer. What I have is a few ideas. So one of them is replayability. Like, if the game finishes or you play it, do you want to play it again? My daughter's notorious for that. We do a lot of board games at home over the pandemic. What else are you going to do? So there are games that we'd finish a two-hour game. I want to play again. We actually had rules, so we played like Pandemic Legacy, just so you only play it once or twice a month, but we played it for an entire year. Fun game. So, um, but when you're playing or con con continuity of play, how many of you played a computer game and all of a sudden looked out the window and realized that the sun is coming up and the birds are singing? Oh, yeah. Civ. God. That one, one more turn, one more turn, one more, tweet, 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 oh shit. Uh, challenge, does the game engage you? Is it something that you actually feel like you're a part of, that you get caught up in? Do, do your choices matter? I mean, if you play a game like um, just Snakes and Ladders, you know, it's roll the dice, move the piece, but there's absolutely no control that you have on the game that is going to make a difference. It is just happening. You could write a computer program to play Monopoly. It wouldn't be that hard. You know, it's buy all the property and charge every, you know, just what the best progress is. And after that, it's a pure luck game. You might as well just roll 2d6. I rolled an 8. You rolled a 12. You win. Okay. What are we going to play now? Because it comes down to pure luck. It's just stretching it out over way too much time so you can have a nice fight in your family. <laughs> it's nice to know that choice you make makes a difference. In EVE, the choices that we make do make a difference. Unless you're talking about fighting off the Triglavians. <laughs> I was not happy with that. Okay, <laughs> Just letting you know, putting it out there, that I don't like when... If they tell me this is an event and it's going to happen, and that wasn't the first time. The first time was when they brought out Dust 514, and they had the bite battle over the Caldari uh, home system with the Titan crashing into the planet. And it was already preset, but they didn't tell us that. We thought we could stop this. And then to find out that they actually released the graphic before the event even happened, and it's like, why are we fighting a battle when we know how it ends? You know, that was really frustrating because that's not Eve. Eve has always been, you make a bad choice, you're going home in a pod or Death Express. You make a good choice, you may still go home in a pod, but leastwise you got somebody else with it. <laughs> you know, the choices we make in the game make a difference. Who you trust, who you play with, who you fly with, who you fly against, all of these choices. This game is complex because we have so many choices. And the newbies, the mayflies, they have no concept of what they're getting into. Because they just want to find their version. Fortnite is, your choices are, which gun do you want? And am I going to build a tower or just try to hide and shoot everybody? Their choices are really binary and limited. You give them a game like this, and they got no concept of what's going on. So choices, do your choices matter? Now, I wish there was a way to move the screen down because my notes go on, so I'm going to skip a quote. <laughs> Later I'll have other quotes. There are people who have been analyzing game choices for a long time. And the funny thing is, Eve is, uh, this is the original box, in case you don't know. Congratulations, that's impressive. This came out in 2003. CCP actually found a publisher, uh, Simon & Schuster Interactive, to publish their game and to market it. Unfortunately, Simon & Schuster Interactive closed about six months later. So CCP had to promptly buy back their own IP, intellectual property, and, um, and go it alone, which you got to understand, this was 2003. So they had mixed success. 2003, EverQuest had been running for a year. And it was doing pretty good. Uh, our nickname for it was Evercrack. 
the birds are singing. <laughs> I have been, I have killed Flippy Darkpaw way too often, okay? If you have played EverQuest, you know what I'm talking about. The rest of you, just assume it's a, well, it's a, things that you don't need to know. <laughs> but EverQuest was going strong, but could you compete with it? Could sci-fi compete with fantasy? Was the market big enough to actually support more than one MMO? WoW hadn't, had another year before it came out. So EVE was actually breaking new ground in a lot of ways, trying for a 3D space game, which pretty much didn't have a tutorial, and it didn't. <laughs> like, here's a spaceship, good fucking luck, off you go. <laughs> so they mainly depended on the massive support of their players. 2003, Eve is dying. This was the first person to say it. I actually did a search on this. <laughs> June of 2003. Remember, the game started uh, May, what was yesterday? The 6th? May 6th of 2003. In June, it was declared to be dying. Wow. I really want to know where that player went. I wish I knew. I, I did a check on Eve Kill and that sort of thing. No activity. Um, the, but, you know, I want to know how long they played after they declared the game was dead. Did they play with the corpse? <laughs> Eve didn't die that year, or the year after, or quite a few years after. We're standing, I'm standing here, you're sitting here, celebrating the fact that we're not dead yet. Yet. Eve, Eve, Mike, Mike just in case you don't get the reference. But I do want to know, did that person find a game? Are they playing something else? Are they, are they having fun? Or were they just one of those people who likes to hate everything and has, have been si since drifting from game to game, hating each one, declaring it dead, and going on to the next one? Sounds like a mayfly. Yeah, May, and that would be the mayfly rather than the quahog. It's, it's what did they find? Or were they just, there are some people, have you tried to introduce Eve to some people and it doesn't take at all? Like they find it boring. Like I do not find this game boring, but there are tons of people who go, this is a boring game. And if they saw yesterday's keynote, we are now totally associated with Microsoft Excel. I'm going. Way to sell the game to the masses. Yes, spreadsheets in space, and now we just make it part of the keynote. Yay. <laughs> We've gone through some times. I put that together a little while ago. Eve has had its ups and downs. It's had some fantastic days, and some days we wish just didn't happen, or decisions that didn't happen. Massive crashes, huge wars. Good decisions, bad ones. Over 19 years, you kind of expect that to happen. Trial and error means sometimes there's got to be error. There are people who can probably look at this graph and say exactly what happened on that peak or on that valley. They can say, right there, that was blackout. Right there, that was M2. Right there, that was uh, This Is Eve video. Man, did that cause an influx of players. I don't remember what happened when we set the uh, mass of uh, most people logged on, the 65K or whatever. I don't remember why we all logged on that day. I just know we did. I'm not one. Uh, my memory is more Mayfly than Quahog. But I'm really impressed with the people who can look at this graph and say, I know that. I remember that. I was there. Or I was there. Or if you just started, you're somewhere over here. That's okay. But there are people who look at this graph and say, there was a peak, and ever since we've been going down, Eve is dying. I wonder if they were surprised by the second peak of COVID. <laughs> Too soon? You know, because I've seen graphs recently over the last couple of years go up, go down, yay, it's over. 
Nope. Yay, it's over. Uh-huh. Yay, it's, I'm just getting tired of this. <laughs> so, Eve has a weird tradition. If you actually work for the company for 10 years, they get a sword custom made for you. That's all the employees that have stayed with the game company for 10 years. If you stay 20, you have an option of getting a two-hander. Hilmar got one a little while, what, about five years ago thereabouts. Uh, he, gave, he said option in that the company said, you've been with us 20 years, we'll get you a gift, what would you like? One of the other guys asked for a shotgun, and one said, I'll take a trip to Italy. He went with the sword. Funny thing, in Iceland, you can't own a sword. <laughs> Too much Viking shit going on, I suppose, but... <laughs> they don't trust you. So to actually have the swords at, uh, at their office... They had to, um, the only way you can own a sword is if you're a museum. So it's out and under plexiglass so that they can say it's an exhibit, and they have qualified their office, their front office, is a museum of swords of the employees of the office. <laughs> but you can't take it home, because if you were walking down the street, they would come and arrest you for carrying an illegal blade. And they would especially go after Hilmar with that big bastard. Well, actually, it's a two-hander, not a bastard sword. Sorry, D&D. &D. <laughs> but the thing is about that wall is that says that the lifespan is still there and that they're lasting. Game companies are notorious for headhunting and flipping companies at the drop of a hat. You know, you get hired by one. Two years later, you're working for that company. Three years later, you're working for that company. Devs flit and move around. And yet they have a wall of swords of people who have stayed with this game, with this game company for 10 years. That's kind of cool. It also means, but, again, with the 57% that I told you about, told you about before, they also said 60% or 63, I can't remember that number positively, percent of the employees are new enough that they weren't here for the last fan fest. There's a lot of devs who are new to the system. And that's partially uh, got to do with flipping, but a lot with just they've been doing a lot of hiring lately. Which, if Eve is dying, that's a really dumb way to go is, we're dying, let's get more employees. I like this graph. It's got way too much information on it. It breaks all the rules of slides. You're not supposed to do this many words on a, on a slide, but I don't care. Uh, we play a game, science fiction, but please do not ask me if this game has any physics in it, because it doesn't. <laughs> We're basically flying submarines in space, you know, not spaceships. There's no momentum, the, no orbital mechanics. Gravity is just a suggestion, and more than one of you have flown through the sun without getting warm. But the backdrop is there. We've got astronomy, we've got geoscience, we've got PI, mining the planets. So we're playing that made with this, computer sciences. I mean, the graphics of this game are gorgeous. And they're all zeros and ones. Like, do you think that through, that what you're looking at is a series of binary code in motion, in action, everything is zeros and ones when you get down to the bottom of it? and they managed to make something that's engaged me for 13 years and you for however long, and they study it with the social sciences. Now that's funny. There are universities who have sent people to do their PhDs on EVE and EVE players. Economists study our economy as a runaway economy with no uh, normal checks and balances. There's no FCC to make sure that you're doing the trades legally. Matter of fact, the only people who really get watched to uh, make sure that they're not doing real scams and cheating are the CSM. They watch me. Because heaven forbid that I, I just don't do trading when I'm serving on the CSM, and one or two have, and they've been caught. And removed from the CSM, had characters banned. Like, they are very serious about making sure that we don't take unfair advantage of what we do. Some of you are still positive, probably, that the CSM cheats, uses inside trader information. You're welcome to that. I 
At the last uh, fan fest, I made tinfoil hats for people. <laughs> but the funny thing is, you notice when I started this talk, the branch of science I went wasn't formal mathematics, wasn't physics or geosciences, wasn't social sciences. I started with life sciences, biology, because I'm talking about longevity and living. And to a certain extent, I really, really wish that um, CCP would hire a biologist. We actually have a channel, the CSM, with CCP called Ecosystem. So they're acknowledging that this is an ecosystem. We have predators, we have prey. We have uh, all of these interactions and dynamics, and we're trying to find a balance between them. We don't want to encourage one light game style over another too much, or else we'll drive players out of the game. We want it to be a balance. It's kind of like the forest full of wolves and deer. If you encourage the wolves too much, all the deer get killed, but then the wolves all starve to death afterwards. If you kill off all the wolves, the deer population will bloom, and then disease will run through it, and it'll die off as well. So we are an ecosystem in a weird way, and I think it would be really neat if they data mined this and handed it to a biologist who studies that sort of dynamic balance and see what they had to say about the game. They actually have, uh, I met a few uh, CCP devs yesterday who are pure data miners. Like what they do is build the data and collect the data and present it to the devs to say this is what's happening in the game. I told them and they said, you know, that's kind of a neat idea. So I'm done for my uh, CSM span. So that's why I started with biology is um, I, I'm retired now, but I was a science and math teacher, high school. And so when I look at something, I look at it from whatever lens of whatever subject I'm thinking about at the time. You know, some days I look at something and I'm doing the math of it. Other days it'll be the biology, the physics. And because all of this is so interconnected, that's what you do is you try to explain things in a way that it makes sense to everybody. But not all of us speak the same bloody language or think in the same direction. So as a teacher, you try to connect. One of the phrases that used to go around was grow or die. There we go. Uh, that little pithy saying has been pretty much debunked. But people are looking at the Eve curve of the population. I had a few slides back and saying, we're not growing, therefore we are dying. We were dying even when we were growing. Everything has a lifespan, it's just how long. But I like this one better. Improve or die. Darwin liked that one too. It was kind of like adapt. But he also admitted that adaptability wasn't all that it was shook up to be. It's not like the entire species found the perfect path and followed it. It's they spread out all over the place, and one of them probably found the right idea, and the rest of them died off. So Eve has been fighting a competition doing this, finding its way through a minefield by trial and error and hitting the occasional mine and doing something stupid, blackout. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so um, being adaptive is important. Being adaptable is really important. Being able to pick your path. But the thing is with a gaming company is if you go down a wrong path, can you back up and go in a different direction? Or are you going to lock in? Damn it, I don't care. The players are wrong. We're going that way. <laughs> Please no. I'm sure some of you can think of occasional times when Eve has made a mistake. <laughs> I'm sure some of you can think of times when you've made mistakes. But you're still here. I'm sure you've lost a ship or two that you really wish you didn't take that ship out that day. Or that you checked your implants before you undocked. <laughs> Been there, done that. Or, for the older ones, Remember to update your clone. <laughs> Been there, done that, drank the water. Did not enjoy it. It's okay to make mistakes, because there is no road map. <laughs> okay, wrong phrase. <laughs> there is no road map. Um, there is no manual that tells you this is the way that you're supposed to run a gaming company. The funny thing is, other gaming companies kind of consider Eve 
a very unique thing because we break all the rules and somehow still live. We still have players showing up after 19 years playing the game. We monetize different. Don't get me started, okay? <laughs> Not going to go further than just saying that phrase. But to a certain extent, Eve goes, people say, this is how game companies work, then there's CCP. They work, but we don't know why, we don't know how, they just do, okay? I think one of the key features that EVE has, that other game companies have, but they have in a different way, is you guys. A loyal fan base, and man, some of us are fanatically loyal. I mean, how many of you brought swag for other people? You know, out of your own pocket, made things, coasters, pins. How many of you have a ton of pins on your lanyard already from meeting those people who did do the stuff? There are people who have had specialty shirts made, flags made. You know, we are a bunch of fanatics. Probably scary to the normal gaming companies. No, okay, but they get their fanatics too. But the thing that gets me is Eve is way bigger than a game. And one of the other things I was talking about is when you stop playing the game, remember I was saying the things that make a game last? is when you stop playing, do you still play it in your head? Are you thinking about it in your off time? You're not at the computer, but you're going, you know, I think I got a good fit. Or I know how we can catch that damn spy. Or, ha ha, they'll never see this coming. <laughs> <laughs> they did. <laughs> uh, that shot's from me, Vegas. But the thing is, um, you guys are what make the game last, and probably the game companies would love to have you become fanatics for their game, but no, you can't have them. Almost done. What am I doing for time? 39. What's that? 10.39. Oh, excellent. I'm almost right on path. So here we are. One last thought on longevity, then I'll let you go or ask questions or whatever. I will accept drinks, except Brennan's meh for me. There's a group called The Long Now. They want to make a clock that will run for the next 10,000 years. Seriously, I think they're insane. But they actually are trying to figure out the engineering and the best place on the planet to make a mechanical device that will run for 10,000 years and keep accurate time. And they're going to have a group of people who wind the clock or, you know, keep the power running to it because it ru doesn't run off the grid. It's got to run off a mechanical process. Me, um, because I taught physics and a bunch of other things, I'm going, I can't think of any mechanical device that stands a chance of lasting, you know, metal lasting 10,000 years. There's corrosion. There's all sorts of things. I think it's a fantastic idea. It's, it's somebody who's willing to dream really big. But they're going for a static form of longevity. 10,000 years, that's a big thing. There's a poem. I'm only going to quote, I put all of it up, mainly because they gave me that backdrop. <laughs> now, if you read through, I'll get to the line that uh, sticks with me. Um, Look on my works, ye mighty in despair. Nothing beside remains round the decay of the colossal wreck. Boundless and bare, lone and level sand stretch away. But it starts with two vast trunkless legs of stone. The only part of that statue not there is the legs. <laughs> so I just found that weird that the poem was the reverse of the image that I had to use. But it's the idea of building something that will last forever and brag that it's there. I left my footprints on the sands of time. But the problem is the sands of time are right next to the ocean of time, and the ocean is going to wash that sand and erase you. You get your longevity for a period of time. You may last the time after in the memory of family and that sort of thing, but 10,000 years from now, nobody is going to remember you, me, the game, maybe. This is the other type of, uh, oops, I'm going to trip on that one of these times. This is the other type of longevity. This is Athens, just in case you don't recognize the architecture. It's one of the oldest continuous cities on the planet. 
Not the old, it's just one of them, because there's arguments about when they started. Uh, Athens has been there, according to recorded history, for 3,400 years. But archaeologists are pretty sure that um, human presence has been there from the 11th to, 11th to 7th century BC. So that puts it more like 13,000 years there's been people living there. But unlike the Long Now's clock, they didn't build the city, say, this is exactly how it's going to stay forever. It has had its ups and downs, its disasters. It's been bombed. It's been burned. It has grown. It's had technology change under it, over it, all the way around it. It got plumbing. <laughs> and, but it's still there. So to a certain extent, it has a permanence. It has longevity as a city because it didn't try to be a static longevity. It went with a dynamic balance. And Eve is doing the same thing. Eve doesn't try to be the same game it was 19 years ago. We probably wouldn't play that. Well, no, I take that back. Some of you would. <laughs> but the game has grown, changed. It's always growing and changing. They've got new things coming that you guys, that I know about, that you don't. Eene, 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 eene. <laughs> it's okay, I'm not running next term, so you can't, vote. You can't not vote for me. He made fun of us. We're not going to vote for him. <laughs> That'll teach him. No, I'm not running. That taught you. <laughs> Dynamic balance. We've grown. We've changed. But the thing is, the foundations, just like the Parthenons there, um, there's still legacy code. There's still bits and pieces of the old Eve hiding there, scaring the devs in the dark of night. They will not touch pauses. Pause code is dead. They will not touch the billboards. They tr tried that once. It shut down all the gates. <laughs> so they're afraid of their own code. And it's worse, because a lot of the original coders are long gone, and they didn't. Um, Hilmar was quoted once as saying, when they made Eve, they were hoping for it to last five years. So we're 14 years past the best before date. <laughs> no wonder it's a little stale. Does this Eve taste off to you? Back to the Sphinx. So what's full of bugs in the morning? Sand and salt at noon and empty in the evening. A video game. Just in case you didn't get that. As far as I'm concerned, when I play, I still see a lot of salt. The game is still there. I think we're still in our afternoon. Occasionally, some of you can convince me it might be getting close to late afternoon, if you're looking at the graph. But seeing as I did one poem, you didn't expect this to be a poetry reading, did you? Ha! I didn't mention that in the outline. Uh, quote, and most of you will know this quote from a movie I enjoyed, but do not go gentle into the good night. Old age should burn and rave at the close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Though wise men at their end, no dark is right. Because their words fork no lightning, they do not go gently into that good night. Dylan Thomas. Eve may go down eventually, but I think it's going to go down with us kicking and screaming. There are some people who, you know, the running joke is, I want to be there when they turn the lights out. You know, some of us have that loyalty that the only way I won't be here when they turn the lights out is probably my lights will get turned out first. Here's a weird one for you, for the older people in the game. I actually have arranged with CCP for the bus assets to be passed back into the game as opposed to lost if I pass away. I've got my daughter has uh, the communication to, I've made a game will because the game assets are important to me. They're not a real thing, they're pixels. And we sign a EULA that says, they're not even your pixels. You know, technically you don't own anything in EVE. You got a nice badge, this is real and it's mine. But you don't own any of the pixels, but I actually want to make sure that the bus, that the material goes back, any Plex that I have at the time, I want donated to the next Plex for good. 
If there's another charity organization running at that time, I want the ISC pass there or just bought, buy Plex on that day and donate that to Plex for good. I have written an Eve will. Sorry, didn't mean to depress you. I like that image. Can you figure out where you are and where CCP is? Four legs in the morning, two legs in the afternoon, and three legs in the evening. The answer, man. In the morning, he crawls like a baby. In the daytime, he walks on two legs. In the evening, we all... I actually brought a cane, and I was going to do a little magic trick and make the cane appear. Unfortunately, they suddenly said it's 10 o'clock. So, magicians should never tell somebody that there's about to be a trick, but I don't really care. That is the end of the talk, except for the stupid magic trick. I was happy with this. I really wanted to do this. So I'm going to do it whether it looks good or not. So I am in my twilight. I have my cane. Are there any questions? Any comments? If you want to ask stuff about the CSM, we don't have a CSM roundtable this fan fest. So if you want to ask some CSM questions, you're welcome. You might assume I pay attention. <laughs> but that's it. Are there any questions, comments? Fortunately, they haven't given you any tomatoes to throw. <laughs> no? Well, there are some lovely talk, people talking to you that probably know a lot more than I do. I know I'm looking forward to seeing some of the other speakers today. So I hope to see some of you out in the hallway between, and I am glad that you all came all the way to Iceland. I'm glad I came all the way to Iceland. I'm from West Coast Canada. So it's a long flight. And I, I'm built on the large economy size. I don't fit airplanes. <laughs> you know, like, but my family's here. They're having a grand time. I get to drive the Golden Circle tomorrow and have a bit of fun. Thank you very much. You've been ve both of you have been very patient. <laughs> <laughs>